We're in the book of Luke, chapter 18, uh, with our family devotions. We read it, the chapter, the entire chapter last night. And um, understanding Bible typology is very important as a Bible-believing Christian. And there's a beautiful story here in the end part of the chapter 18 of the book of Luke, and it perfectly pictures genuine conversion, um, genuine saving faith. So I thought I'd read this real quick here, just do a real quick little Bible study out here with the beautiful autumn collars of the leaves behind me. A lot of the leaves of the trees are off now, or heading into winter. Pretty chilly outside. But um, Luke chapter 18, verse 35, we'll begin there. It says, And it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passeth by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Um, you're blind as a lost person. You cannot see, you cannot understand spiritual things. But um, you hear that God manifest in the flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's passing by. And uh, you don't just sit there and go, oh, and believe, you know, I'm going to just go into I'll, uh, increase in knowledge, you know, gnosis, as a Gnostic would no, you say, um, there's Jesus. Uh, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, please, I need to be saved. I believe that you died on the cross to pay for my sins. I believe that. See, he wouldn't have called if he didn't believe. But you got a lot of devils out there, like Robert Breaker and uh, a few others, and they teach that there's, it's just belief. It's just um, mental assent to certain facts in the scriptures, and there's no calling. Uh, that's very false, and you will not see that in Scripture. There's a calling there that you do when you want to be saved. Verse 39, And they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. A lot of uh, your friends and family will say, uh, don't, don't fall for that stuff. You know, come on, don't, don't uh, try to be saved and be one of these Christians and whatever. They'll try to talk you out of it. But... He cried so much the more, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. I don't care what people think. I need to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to know that I'm going to go to heaven when I die. Verse 40, And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. I want to be saved and I want to understand what's going on. The Holy Spirit, when he comes, will guide you into all truth. Um, I know that this might not be the, the best thing in the world because I'm going to find out some bad stuff, but uh, I'd like to know the truth. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, thy faith hath saved thee. Huh. Um, one of the parts of salvation. You see, but it's, it's faith alone. Faith, God's grace, man's faith okay by grace are you saved through faith don't ever leave out the grace if it's just by your faith then um you know i mean obviously the lord didn't have to say well you know you called upon me here and you believed and all that no he's just saying you had enough faith to call upon me to be saved that's what's going on there thy faith hath saved thee and look at verse 43 and immediately he received his sight and followed him glorifying god and all the people when they saw it gave praise unto God. Um, when you get saved, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. And a lot of these uh, people that are after your money and after you as a number that they can say, oh, I led so many people to the Lord. Um, they don't care. They won't tell you the truth. And they, you know, oh, you know, I've uh, gone out and I've led so many people to the Lord and where are they now? Oh, uh, well, you know, a lot of them fell away and, you know, they came to church for a little while and then they left and, and I don't know where they are now, but, you know, they got saved because I, they said that they did. Uh, no, genuine saving faith produces a changed life. All right, I've been saved for a long time. I've seen uh, thousands of false converts down through the years. Um, yeah, I used to go to that church, but... Uh, I don't go out there anymore. I, I just don't believe in that Jesus stuff anymore. Yeah, I was I was raised a Christian, but uh, now, you know, I'm an atheist now. 
oh, I think that they're still saved because they, they originally said a prayer and so they're still saved. Mighty shaky ground to try to stand on there, friend. Um, if I'm in error, see, if I'm in error, then it's not really going to cost me much. I'll get to heaven and the Lord will say, well, you were kind of legalistic down there, Brian. You were really trying to convince people to live a righteous life and things when they didn't really have to because they got saved. And then they can just deny me for the rest of their life and live just like the world. But they were saved because they originally prayed a prayer or believed, you know. Um, that would be what the people who are against this ministry would say. But I believe if I get up to heaven, it would be far safer for me to have to stand before the Lord and have him say, hey, you tried your best to turn people to true saving faith. And you preached against sin. See, that's why a real preacher preaches against sin. Fake ones, they don't want to talk much about sin because it drives people away. See, so it's a lot of encouraging messages and things to keep you there. Um, I'm going to do some of that, certainly exhortation to the brethren, but I also want to be able to preach in a way that you understand the importance of having that changed life, the importance of fighting against sin in your life. All sin is negative. Always remember that. That's why I preach so hard against sin. Um, I know what sin has done in my life. Whenever I let sin in, I start to have problems. Things fall apart. So, um, people should see a change in you. Um, you know, uh, the old hymn, you know, what a wonderful change has in my life has been wrought since Jesus moved into my heart, or came into my heart, excuse me. Um, you know, so many different old hymns and so many testimonies of people who changed uh, the Apostle Paul, going from Saul to Paul. And I mean, look at the change that happened in his life. I mean, would it have made any sense at all for Paul to say, well, uh, yeah, I went from being Saul to now Paul, and um, I was persecuting Christians in the past, and you know, I, while I do believe in Jesus, I think it's still, I mean, it's my job. It's what I do for a living, whatever. I still persecute Christians. <laughs> no, uh, there's a change that happens. And you know what it should do? People should glorify God as a result. They should look at your life and they should say, wow, I remember that guy. Boy, I remember that woman. They were, they were pretty rough. And um, boy, they certainly, whatever they got, I, I don't want any of it myself. <laughs> I don't want to clean up my life, but um, it's real. It's, leg it's legitimate. You know, the old saying goes, um, if you were put on trial for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? I hope so. So, it's a little challenge here today. I have to head to the office here soon, but I hope that I've made you think. That's the purpose of this ministry. So that will be it. Thank you very much for watching.